So the pasta is ready and this is really the first bite. I cannot wait. It took a long while to make this recipe, but great recipes take time. time. Good food takes time. Bismillah. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm in love. It's nice and soft. Oh my yeah. God. This... And that's why we use the cheese and not wait, the Wait, potato. wait, wait, wait. I did not taste enough. Assalamu alaikum wa hayyakum Allah fi halqa yadida min al tabaq al khamas. Again, we're gonna speak in English and we'll have the subtitles below. I have my dear friend, Chef Brian from Cut and Re Asia at the Four Seasons Bahrain, one of the finest restaurants in the island. You saw in the previous collaboration we had, we made ricotta cheese. Yep. And it was phenomenal ricotta cheese. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the ricotta cheese in well, this episode? Right. If I hadn't pulled the cheese away from you, you would have just eaten it all. Absolutely, uh, I so would. So now what so we're good. gonna do, because we did save it, uh, we will use that to make a pasta dough. Uh, technically a cavatelli dough, but we're going to shape it like gnocchi. Beautiful. It's easy, it's simple, and you're not going to believe how easy this is. You can do it at home anytime. You saw how easy the recipe was for the ricotta cheese. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy this. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay on top of anything new. Brian, show us the gnocchi, man. Great. So the first thing we're going to do is take our uh, goat milk ricotta that I we made this. on the last I episode. This. I love this recipe. Again, super, super simple, only a couple of ingredients. Anybody can do this at home, don't be afraid to try. Get your children with you. It's really fun, it's really messy, hey, they're gonna yes. love it. If you don't have little kids running around the house with flour on them, you're doing it wrong. Wrong, absolutely. <laughs> so we have some all-purpose flour, uh, nutmeg. I love nutmeg, it's my favorite spice. Well, you're gonna love this. Uh, absolutely. Salt, so, uh, an egg yolk and a whole egg. All right. Some black pepper and some parmesan reggiano. You cannot do pasta without parmesan, I can agree, you? I agree. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a little base down. All right, let's flour this table. All right. And then we can take our cheese. Now it's hung for a day, so it's got some firmness to it's it. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Yep. Look at that. To find out how we did the ricotta cheese, just go to the previous episode and we'll put the link below to it and you can follow it step by step. So we're just adding our flour to right. our ricotta, right? Before we get some additional wet ingredients in. I'll make my little well so I don't. It looks like dough already. Yeah, I know. We're, it we're, does. Well, we're halfway there. I said it was easy. It is, it is. <laughs> so uh, our egg, egg yolk. yolks to keep yeah. everything combined. And a whole egg. I normally go to egg yolks. I don't mm. go whites. Why mm. did you add whites? I want the protein content from it okay. uh, because I'm not going to have too much structure because I'm using cheese and not potato. All right, all right. So I do have a reason. All right. Now we're going to add the nutmeg, which is your favorite. It is. A little goes a long way. I remember having pasta at Chef Brian restaurant at Cut. It was my anniversary <laughs> and he blew me away. It was ravioli with butter sauce. It was just perfect. You gotta try it. And then the last thing is uh, our Cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano. All I'm gonna right. put this right in the middle. Let's try to kind of work it in. So basically the amount of flour to cheese is very minimum. So basically we'll be eating cheese. Right, now I'm gonna add some more uh, flour All right. because this is gonna be relatively wet, but I can always add more, I can't take away. So if you wouldn't mind throwing a, just a big old handful right in the middle. Okay, ready? Some more? Yeah. All right. And just a little bit more. Here we go. Yeah, now we're good. And basically all I want is for this to come together into a very soft dough. So I already know that I'm gonna need more flour, but I want it to start to absorb a bit. Actually, to get together. And that blue scraper up there. All right, let me get it for you. Brian is adding now more flour to the dough just to firm it up and get more texture into it. It's always beautiful to learn something new. Kitchen is about learning and about sharing. Chefs always improve while working together. So chefs out there, go out, try new things. Talk to your fellow chefs, try something new. Yeah, now, just seeing him doing this recipe, I have two million things in my head I want to try. Sometimes I just want to 
<laughs> push him over and I was like, let me do this. Go for but it. But you know what? It's his time to show. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful dough, Brian. Yep. So basically now we've got a very, very soft dough because we use cheese and not potato. So we don't have a lot of uh, you know, texture or, or structure to go with, which is good because ultimately we want a very soft pasta. We want something that melts in our mouth. If you've seen The Godfather, it's the pasta in epi episode three of The Godfather. You remember that part? No. When <laughs> <laughs> the third Godfather is the one where they use the helicopter to shoot through the building. In Atlanta uh, City. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the same casino you worked in? No, fortunately, no. <laughs> cool, so I'm just, I'm just adding a, the last little bit of flour, make All sure right. it's firm enough, and then it's gonna rest for 30 minutes. What is the texture you're looking for? Just Can you honestly, show them? Sure, honestly, it just needs to be uh, holding together. All right. Okay, so it's not coming apart at all, it's one solid structure. That looks beautiful. Already. Right, and, uh, and the reason that we're gonna rest it is because the flour needs to really absorb all the moisture that's there so we don't get a raw if it's any, If it's if any softer right now, let's say our eggs were bigger than the one we use right now. Just, we add, just a add more flour. That's right, just a all little right. bit more flour and you're, on, you're in business. Can I season it? Yes, you can. What seasoning? Well, we got a good amount of salt from our Parmesan Reggiano and all I'm right. gonna add more because there's no such thing as too much. Um, salt, pepper, all these things are fine. What about herbs? Can we add some herbs Absolutely, you could add thyme, you could add basil, you could add uh, anything. The, uh, the only caveat I would say is that any green herb is probably going to turn brown at some right. point in this process. Because of the resting. Right. But if you don't mind uh, the way it looks, the flavor will still be there. As I told you before, guys, if you're a chef, you're a cook, just be playful, have fun, yeah. and try new things. It's always the best way. Recipes are a something. guideline. They exactly. Are, they are exactly. not the rules. No one's going to arrest you. We always used to say here in Tea Club, there is no perfect recipe. There is always something missing that you can improve yeah. or change. Cool. So I our dough is uh, firm enough. All right. And now, like I said, it's going to need to rest. So we're just going to... How long do, usually you would rest it? Uh, at least 30 minutes. An hour is really good. In uh, the fridge or we can keep it outside? I would say in the fridge. Normally with a potato gnocchi, I'll just keep it there with a I'll yeah. cover it up with a towel and just keep it for minutes. Right. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the same. We can do a wet towel. We can do cling film. I mean, we want to retain the moisture so it hydrates the flour. Perfect. Very simple. Perfect. Well, fortunately, we have one that we made earlier and that we did a rest. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Let's show them the difference. Yep. You can see this one has obviously firmed up a little bit as that flour. And it observed everything in mm -hmm. there. You can see it is already nice and firm. Yep. This is, it's a different texture and it's still sticky. So mm -hmm. that's the key for you. Get the stickiness out. Especially when you cook gnocchi, they would break. After boiling them, if you want to fry them, you need them as firm as possible before they break. But don't over firm them, they will be gummy. Yes. <laughs> yes, especially with potato. Cool. So now we just are going to shape our pasta. Cool. So, easy shape. It can really be any shape. I mean, this is not uh, super specific in any way. How do you like them? Oh, I'm going to show you. All right. So, I, I mean, I'm using this little tool. Most people don't have a, uh, a dough scraper like this. You can use a knife. You can use, use a spatula. As you can use the side of a plate. Yeah. You can use whatever you've got. Anything to cut the dough. It's a very right. soft dough. So, and then... All I want to do is I just want to make it long, and, and the best way to do that is to... Just like Play-Doh. Just like Play-Doh, right. Yeah. And start in the middle and let kind of my fingers do the work. Get your children and they'll love it. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then they'll know that they made it and they'll have something that they're kind of proud of, which is always good. How many years have you been cooking, Brian? When is uh, the first time you cooked? How old? 24 years I've been cooking. I started when I was 15, I'm 39. All right. <laughs> so, and you know what? I still look forward to it every day. Food is beautiful. It keeps people happy if you do yep. it right. It's always a joy, it's always fun. <laughs> and the one thing I like to tell people, in all that time, I've made more mistakes than anyone will ever know. And I've eaten more terrible tasting food that I've made. Exactly, if you're right. a good chef, you have to try That's new right. things. That's right. I remember the first time walking into the kitchen, I actually burnt pasta. <laughs> Don't ask me how did I burn pasta, but I did, I was nine, I was nine years old, fourth grade, and I burned pasta. Then I vowed that I will never do bad pasta again. And have you? I did. <laughs> I did. I did over the years because you try new recipes, you right. try new things, you try weird ingredients, some combinations do not 
work. They yeah. have the texture, but you don't have the taste. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you, and then you're going to do this. All right. <laughs> I'm getting my hand yep. there. Thank you, Brian. Oh, you're How welcome. About time. So I'm just putting a little flour so we don't have anything stick. All right, let me get some I, flour in my hand. Yep. I like to use my hands. All right, how are you so going to do So what we're going to do is cut these down. Okay. Right, into little... Uh, about an inch? Yeah, you could do a little smaller. Honestly, okay. again, it's one of those things that it can be whatever we want it to be. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I love it. I love it. I can't wait. How often do you do fresh pasta, uh, Brian? Uh, at the restaurant, we do it every day. Uh, we always have some type of fresh pasta available at cut. All right. um, this gnocchi actually we're currently making. But we do filled pastas, ravioli, agnolotti, things like that. And, and what is your favorite of all time fresh pastas? This. <laughs> all right. We're going to try gnocchi. Chef Brian's best pasta. If you're not going to do this recipe at home as soon as cut open. Come Get see us. It. Exactly. We're, happy, we're happy to do all the mess for you. Cool. Now at this point, um, you could just blanch these. And by blanch, I mean put into boiling water, water yes. salted. The rule I was taught was it should taste like the ocean. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, more salt, always right. more salt. Uh, we like to get fancy. We actually have a, what's called a butter paddle or a gnocchi board. I usually board. use the fork. Fork is also yes. fine. I, and probably we should show that because exactly. most people won't, won't have, have this, this and yes. they will have the Let fork. Let me grab you a fork. Just give yep. me a second. All cool. right, Brian. So most people will not have the fancy tools at home. No, but I actually bought this uh, down in Jawad Dome. So right. it is available here in Bahrain. All right. But everybody has a fork at home. Everybody's got a fork. So even if you don't have the mood, you just can cook them right away. You can they cook them work. just like this. There's no penalty for that. Nothing. Um, it's your recipe. It's your dish. Have fun. Now, I like to take the end where it was cut, meaning went here, so this is my end, and right. just roll to make the lines. Ah, I used to do it the other way. Right, out. yep. I mean, you can t definitely do it this way. Okay. You know, these are a little big for the fork, but that's okay. Um, but that just means that they'll stand up to a bigger piece of mushroom or whatever there else you we want to do. Look how beautiful these are. As I told you guys before and always tell you, in the restaurant it's all about recipes over recipes. In the previous episode, we, Brian did the ricotta, then he showed us how we are doing the New York keys. Now it's the final recipe, it's taking these two beautiful recipes and making this fabulous dish. So can you walk us through this dish, uh, Brian? Absolutely. So what the dish will be will be our goat ricotta gnocchi. All right. And I'm just going to do that very simply with some sauteed mushrooms, a uh, little garlic, some herbs. And then I add dates and pistachios for dates texture. Dates and pistachios. I love <laughs> local ingredients. That's right. Support local. That's right. Now, if people like, they could do that just this just with pasta sauce, you know, any, even the canned one, whatever they like. Or just butter and sage. Right. And honestly, yeah. uh, even making the gnocchi dough, if they wanted not to make the cheese themselves, we're comfortable finding a good product uh, ricotta with a high fat. You could skip you that can step. Go with, right. yes. We're you not go a slave to any recipe here. Okay. As long as you have fun, just keep going. That's right. And enjoy your food. That's right. What, what ingredients do we have for this recipe? So here we have two types of mushrooms. Uh, this is, these are called shimeji mushrooms. Shimeji, they're, where they're indigenous uh, from? Uh, generally uh, Asia, okay. um, as far east as I don't know. I'd be I never good. had those before. Okay, we I use honestly, them very commonly in Re-Asia cuisine. I, I love never them. had them. We use shiitake mushroom here at Tikla yes. and we use button mushrooms. Now, course. I love button mushrooms. It's the unsung hero of a lot of things. Yes. It has more mushroom flavor than anything. Uh, than anything. So if I'm making a mushroom stock, it's the only mushroom that I'm using. So I wanted to include these because these can be found anywhere and I think that they punch above their weight. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, beyond that, very simple. Butter, Butter, minced garlic, some shallots. Again, optional, just like everything in the recipe. But the onions in Bahrain. That's right. <laughs> if you ask anybody so, shallots, you'll have no idea yeah. what you're asking. Onion is fine. <laughs> Onion is totally fine. Yeah. Uh, here we have thyme. Always oh. beautiful. And salt, salt and pepper. pepper. So that's it. Let's do this. Great. So the first thing we're actually going to do is uh, blanch our gnocchi. It's still raw. It's still soft. Always season Ooh, your sorry. water. Chef Brian has so seasoned <laughs> The water, as he puts it in his words, like the ocean. It should taste like the ocean. <laughs> Have you ever gotten a wave in your face and had to spit it out? That's how Salt. salty it should be. Getting flavor into the pasta is very important because the sauce cannot penetrate the pasta to put flavor into the pasta. So seasoning your water is a very important Ooh. step as well. Any pasta, we don't use stocks. We use the pasta water as the stock for any pasta dish. 
All right, so get my pan going. A little bit of olive oil. I love a little bit. It shines. Uh-huh. And I will start with a little bit of butter. The reason that I'm going to start with butter, uh, anytime I cook mushrooms, I do a mix of butter and olive oil because I want a little color, honestly, and it, from and the, the And the mushroom observes. Yeah, right. And it's a, it's a, the animal fat just seems to work better with it. Now, obviously, you're vegan. You don't want to use it. That's fine. You're also not eating cheese. Milk. <laughs> Get right. the life. No, no. <laughs> We have other things for you. <laughs> um, he does. I don't. Yes. <laughs> I should be considering some vegan recipes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, in order to know when our gnocchi is done, the answer is very simple: when it floats. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm adding some mushrooms. A little bit of thyme. I just want the flavor of the thyme to get pulled out from the fat of the butter. And I'm adding what seems like a lot of mushrooms because they're going to they're gonna cook down. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go with a little bit of salt to start. I always usually season in the end. Why yeah. did you season in the beginning? So because anytime I'm not going for super high heat, I season in the beginning because it helps pull moisture out. Okay. And, I kinda, and as these cook, I want them to suck the butter in, and I want as much of that mushroom liquor, as what it's called, out. All right. All right, all right. This is a very interesting point, actually, because usually my philosophy of cooking is to keep the moisture in, in the ingredient till the end. A little bit of color. Perfect. I'm going to add some garlic and then some more garlic. You're doing it in the wrong way, man. <laughs> usually we do garlic, onion, mushrooms. Again, why do you do that? <laughs> I want to give, the, because now I'm going with my heat up, I want to okay. give my mushrooms are the barrier to prevent my garlic from burning. Burning, okay. That's a pointer. We need to try that out. Go to your kitchen and try this new technique. It smells beautiful. Everyone says that as soon as you get garlic hot. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> There's, for me, kitchen is garlic and onion mm -hmm. in a pan. Cool, and we're just waiting for our mushrooms to kind of cook, I'd say 80% through. Okay. Very, very simple. You know I'm stealing this recipe, right? Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are the originators of any recipe. Yes. You're always adapting what someone absolutely, else did. Absolutely. And honestly, I don't, I'm never the person that doesn't want other people to make the food that I'm making. I think that if we do do something new and cool, the best thing to happen is somebody else takes it and then makes it even better. Improves it, absolutely, absolutely. And that's how culture actually develops in the yep. end of the day. It's around the table. So at this point, <laughs> our mushrooms are basically cooked the way that we want them. I'm gonna just take a little bit of chicken stock and slow down or rest the cooking process. Okay, and a little bit goes a long way. I'll add back some butter so I can kind of start mounting it. And uh, giving it a shine. All right, and now at this point, if you wouldn't mind uh, Absolutely. Let me adding the gnocchi. Yeah. You want me to back in the water? Please, please. There you go. Oh, give me the whole thing. The whole thing? Yep. It's right. all in the wrist. It's yeah. all in the wrist. <laughs> uh, right. And uh, if you try to flip the pan and you start making a mess, that's just called learning. Exactly. <laughs> ah, I flipped so many times. Oh, man. It's still the other day. I made an omelet at my house. I got egg everywhere. Always in the house, it's always difficult. Sometimes. Yes, because my pants aren't as good. <laughs> <laughs> but I prefer to be the one cooking because that means that gets out me, uh, get exactly. me out of cleaning up. Exactly. Cool. It looks beautiful, so it looks shiny. It's starting to come in together. The uh, butter is emulsifying with the stock and the starch from the gnocchi, which is our flour, flour yes. is helping. So uh, if you don't have chicken stock, using the seasoned and nice and starchy water from your pasta always is always magic. a good, yes, totally works. So this one, I usually actually remove the thyme because it's done its job. It's given us the flavor that it needs. Beautiful, beautiful. It's nice, it's creamy. Yeah. Come on, Brian. <laughs> Come on, Brian. I'll give it I can't just a little more. bit more liquid so I can... Now I know why I wait so long at your restaurant. <laughs> oh. And you give me all these small bites <laughs> between my starters and my meats. One thing now I've learned I in 24 years of cooking <laughs> is that someone will wait an extra minute for food that is that much better. Better. All right, so at this point, we're going to finish our dish. Perfect. Has mushrooms, has garlic, has thyme, has butter. Has all the magic. Right. I'm going to add some toasted pistachios, I mean, uh, not only for the flavor, but also for the texture. The crunch, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll add a little bit more on top when we put it on the plate. 
I'm going to add some medjool dates for medjool. sweet. Yeah, ah, see, thank you. Yes. Add sweetness, and when you think about you know, goat cheese and figs and all these other combinations, they yes. work really, really well. And I'm not going to be shy with it. And dates. umami, salt, That's sweetness, right. balances it off. But they just need to toss it. Don't, the dates don't need to cook. Um, obviously, neither do the pistachios. All right, and now we can really go to our plate and uh, we'll finish up. Okay. So the pasta is ready, and this is really the first bite. I cannot wait. It took a long while to make this recipe, but great recipes take time. time. Good food takes time. Bismillah. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm in love. It's nice and soft. Oh my yeah. god. And this... that's why we use the cheese and not wait, the potato. Wait, 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 wait. I did not taste it. Let me some get dates, yes. Yeah, yeah, get it in there. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm in love with this recipe. It's so beautiful. It's so satisfying. I told you before. I tried Chef Brian's mm. pasta and they're to die for. This pasta, I never have ever trusted anything like it. The gnocchi is just beautifully perfect. It's soft. It's creamy. I had so many bad gnocchis. Yeah. This one goes to the best of the best of the best pastas I ever had. Thank you, Jeff Brian. My pleasure. I'm stealing this recipe. Of course. Everybody at home, you can do this recipe. You saw I think us. everyone should steal this recipe. Absolutely. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Take your time. Have fun. Enjoy it. Cook with love. Preserved all techniques. Infuse a new stuff into it. Put your heart into it. And keep cooking. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. Hope to have you again. Yep. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels. We'll put them down below and hope to see you again. Thank you.